capability, they can do their job quicker. Is that correct? Well, I mean, the trucks that they read meters in currently, and Philip doesn't like this idea. So that's why he looks at me like I'm crazy. But you look at the seats of all the trucks they drive in. There's no seats left on the side of them from just getting in and out constantly. And True. It, to me, it's a morale thing. I mean, if a guy can just ride around in a golf cart with a meter reader, I think it can be done instead of two to three days, I think it can be done in a day, a day and a half. And what, what, is Dan, does Dan, what do they think? They think it's possible? Let's try it. What they, we got to lose? They call them to bring okay. the bus, and it's it up, then we'll give it to the yeah. guys. Sure. And I don't think Philip's laughing at the truck. I think he's laughing more with that jacket. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Mr. Nash, you want to throw a motion on the floor? I move that we have already approved of the 2500 but um, I'll um, ask if we can increase that to five, uh, to 3000 For a gas cart. Second. For gas cart. Mr. Morgan, a second Mr. Nash's motion. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Next, you have a standard lease agreement with the Pick Nottawa County. Um, Town of Blackstone is uh, going to construct a booster station and it'll be part of the water project at Fort Pickett that'll take tank number one offline. That's the elevated tank that sits at the post gate, the north gate or the main gate. Uh, that'll be coming offline in order to get the same effect as what a water tank does. It'll be a pressure building booster station. Uh, we looked at a site initially that where the design was and that was actually on um, Department of Army property, which is on the south side of 10th Street and that was the original design. Uh, Sandra Reagan and Wilson Palmore and we met and they were very cordial, very helpful and they were, yes we'll do it, but man I'm telling you this is going to take a long time. There's a lot of hoops to jump through, Corps of Engineers and yacht. And we really didn't have that much time. Uh, we, we talked to the Fast Sea folks that own a property adjacent on the south side. Again, Abby's response was, we don't have a real problem with it, but it is just going to be like a Byzantine process to get this done. So our third option was, and probably the easiest one, we went to Nottoway County, and the LRA owns property, which is, if you're familiar with it, on 10th Street next to, or if you're going down 10th Street from the headquarters building and you're going out towards Southside Community College, the wooded area just adjacent to the airfield property, there's a third of an acre site. They own more property than that, but we're asking them to allow us to put the booster station on that. The county has voted on it, and in fact, you have a blank copy, but the county chairman's already signed on behalf of the yep. county. And um, that is the survey that's before you. And I apologize for not putting it in your packet, but the uh, asking authorization to execute the lease. Need a motion to that effect. At no cost. Mr. Colonel Tom Wilkinson has moved. To, and Ms. Hansbrook is second. It's a 50 year lease at no cost to the town. The county graciously agreed. <coughs> All in favor say aye. Uh, aye. Opposed? Motion carries 7 0. Thank you, Nottawa County. Exactly. Thank you. Let the record show Mr. Nash's name. I thank Nottawa County. Thank, Nottawa County. Uh, number three, uh, Ward Bids and Ward A. I think Ward A is getting all the love this, this term. The painting in Ward A. Don't turn it yet. Ward A logically would have been higher on the list and we would have done some things, but in hopes of East End, which have all come true, um, Ward A has been put off to the side. If you go down through there, there's some roads in need of some attention. No we didn't want to do a lot of work until water and sewer goes in, um, but the surface treatment would concentrate in Ward A after the construction is done and we'd surface treat, and then there's a second bid for asphalt patching, which also would be considerable amount tying in curb and gutter but also we got some spots on main street and i'll just be honest with you the papers ain't coming this year the weather just blew them up they're, they did. they're not coming so we got dinwiddie avenue we've got uh you got lunenburg avenue Broad at fourth street. street which is bad uh lunenburg and ninth street or virginia avenue excuse me that main that's, hole yeah. that's yeah. in front of yeah. there are spots that we're gonna we're gonna struggle with all winter Mainly that fourth street intersection, if you're coming from Kangaroo mm -hmm. Express, you, you have to get over almost in the shoulder. It is, to, it's very rough. It's falling yeah. apart. And that's happened before. It must be something going on there under. That's that, the third time that I've seen it peel right there. Yeah. So, and it's not a huge pothole. It's kind of a long, It's a linear. It's li yeah. <coughs> What's going on there over here at the uh, intersection of Nottoway and Brown? It's like. That's the slurry seal on top. It's just pushing, car stopping. Friction. All those yeah. trucks coming from. Yeah, because I, I, I don't remember trucks. before. I mean, just some of these. Well, you can see the the stop bar is actually. We've seen truck to traffic it. in Blackstone more than we've ever seen so before. Yeah. I it's mean, amazing. Dinwiddie Avenue. That's why that spot is so rough. Mm -hmm. We have to rename Dinwiddie Avenue, and I loved him, the Thorpe, Thorpe Lane. Yeah. Because <laughs> yeah. the Thorpe truck, sure, uh, they're rolling. Yeah. I mean, they're going to fast it. We're going to do something, and while we're talking to paving, we're going to do something a little different. We've been using slurry seal over the past few years. Good product, fine product, but it's not as durable. 
Okay. And now that we're in a position now, quick fix. Kind of it's a yep. quick fix. It seals. It's like a parking lot sealer. Okay. But with the truck traffic like Dinwiddie, if you look right at the town limit lines, you can see where it's peeling. We're just not getting enough years out of that slurry seal to justify. I think we're better off either tarring gravel or, or literally milling up the asphalt and putting some new asphalt. Especially on that service station right there. Yeah, that's this spot right there. Slip yeah. in, yeah. embrace in. Yeah. Yep, no doubt. No right doubt. Right turn in there. Yep. If it's a high truck area, it might be worth doing concrete because it, concrete's going to last a whole lot. It might be. What about the, prop, the, the road in front of Wynn's furniture? Is that oh, yeah, that's, that's part of the broad street. Yeah. Okay. It needs to be patched. It was okay. intended to be patched. The colony was supposed to be here last week. All right, well, you have two items in front of you, members of council. You have the first is the, the uh, service treatment schedule and Lanco pavement out of Halifax beat Whitehurst paving. Um, you sat, have they, have they done work for us before? They did it one year. They won the bid. If you remember the year that we bid it out later after the 1st of January, and Whitehurst didn't bid on it. We're too busy. We can't bid. And Lanco got it, and they did the project. That year was when they were in front of Walter Max business. Okay. If you look at it, it's a little darker rock, a little different coloration rock. Right. And they use a, a box weight stone from uh, out Lynchburg Way. To uh, <coughs> Lanco, when they did it, was it satisfactory? Yeah, I think they did a fine job. All right, moved to approve of the lowest bid with Lanco, Lanco paving at $2.17 per square yard. A second. Mr. Miller has seconded Mr. Nash's and that is motion. For surface treatment. This is surface treatment. Any further discussion? I'll ask for a roll call vote because the overall price might get over ten thousand. Starting with Ms. Jones. Aye. 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 Motion carries seven zero. And then the big along, contract coming up. With that I'll do um, asphalt patching for 2019 award to so Lane Code paving in the amount of two hundred forty-four thousand nine hundred sixty-six dollars. The dollar figure may vary, vary simply because if we add more, we subtract some, but we try to stick with at least. The tonnage that we bid out, and I think oh. it was 3,200 tons. This is right here, right? Yes, that's right. Can I ask a question? Well, this bid right here, I mean, I'm, I'm, you know, my question was, they priced it. They really, you know, it's about a hundred thousand dollar difference, right? Pretty significant, wouldn't you think? Yeah, thirty yeah. percent. That's a lot. I talked to Colony about it, and. This is based, people put their bids in based on what their expectation for next year. They're trying to project what's going to happen in August. Yeah, and I mean, uh, some of these people like Colony, I can tell you, they're going to price higher simply because they're busier. So it's supply and demand. If they get it, they get it. If not, they don't yeah, worry about they it. They don't. Because it's reputable. I don't have any reason to believe yeah. that they can't do it. Um, well, these are all bonded. Are these? I mean, they will have to provide it. That dollar figure so, for both projects, since they got them both, they can do it on a, one particular bond if they choose to. But there'll be a performance bond so required. If they don't perform correctly, we get that insurance bond that they. The surety bond. The surety bond. All right, Mr. Nash has moved to go with Lanco Pay with a low bidder at two forty four nine sixty six. Is there a second? Uh, Mr. Jones, a second. Any further discussion? This is something we do every year about this time, and um, the bids do. That's a good point. The bids do fluctuate based on. How busy someone is or thinks they're going to be. Uh, we'll have a roll call vote starting with Mrs. Jones. Aye. 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 Motion carries 7 0. Nottaway County delinquent taxes. This is an issue, ladies and gentlemen, that has come up before um, with the previous council where Nottaway County has delinquent tax options <coughs> where the winning bids do not really justify or cover the county's expenses. And I believe, Mr. Norbeck, the last council did decide to accept as did Nottaway County, mm -hmm. the low bids, even though they were not being made whole by them, just to get them back on the tax rolls. Get them back on the tax rolls. I, I agree with that line of thinking, but... Some of these, I mean, I can tell you the first property that we're being asked to um, in the amount of $47.06 <laughs> is a property that cannot be built on, will never be built on, but it's going to go to somebody that will probably pay taxes on it. So It's off Northwest Avenue at the intersection of Crail Road, mm -hmm. the back road that kind of loops around behind the old uh, cable TV yeah. towers. It's... Back against the railroad. Yeah. It's, mm, okay. And that's what a lot of these properties are. So if we transfer, if, if the county actually approves all the sales and it transfers to a new owner, we probably have a better chance of getting paid taxes in the future. So. Correct. The, the second piece, just for your information, is on Loop Street. And it's just a 25-foot wide lot on Loop Street. Okay. And it's been auctioned off since 2010. And the bids have been rejected throughout. And then the last one is over on Stoke Street. Stoke Street. The wooded area, if you're going up Stoke Street from the Fields House where we're building it, the wooded area on the left past, uh, what's the lady that we painted her 
uh, Shirley Elder's house. Go past Shirley Elder's house. On the same side of the road, there's a wooded area. There's just one lot in there, and uh, I believe it's 50 foot wide. And uh, the total number of amount of taxes the town is owed is $573. And there was a property that sold on uh, South Main Street next to Dollar General. Is that, I guess that must have met. That was the Forest Outlaw property. If you read the first correct. paragraph, it says bids received for the properties of so Shirley Harris, Hawks, Lillian F. Jones, Ethel Newsom, okay. and Forest Outlaw, uh, and a couple others were uh, adequate to pay the taxes and costs. I move that the town agree to waive the outstanding taxes for the three properties of the Forest. Is there a second to Mr. Nash's motion? Second. And Tom Wilkerson has seconded. Any further discussion? I know some of the buyers here. Some of the just—they just like buying. They just get it. They just feel like they're happy when they buy something cheap. Right. <laughs> I, I know so, several. All in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Um, tax levies for fire department, Mr. Norbeck. This apparently this issue first raised by Chief Tomer is a county issue. It is a county issue. If you read the state code, you're pretty specific. Cities and counties may impose these kinds of things. Now, obviously. Uh, 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 Motion of support from the town council ultimately may or a resolution of support from the town council, but this would have to be adopted by Nottaway County. And what it would approximately do is divide the town or divide the county into fire districts. And I think they've already got service already areas. Yep. And then there will be a tax levy specific to that district if there's new capital being purchased or for whatever reason. I, and I think there's three territories, Burkle, Crew, and, there are. and Black Crew. But I think the goal is, is that this new tax district would not include our current residents. This is it for any new development, such as. I think that's correct. I think if Dion recognizes that will be even tougher to do, but correct. Perhaps creating special tax districts for new subdivisions or for something that may be forthcoming and have it apply. I Just one, the public to know we're not looking to increase no. taxes. That'd be something like, well, uh, Gomez is out there. It's, right. it's all about. It's all about. Yeah, it's this is what that's geared at. Those people that bring big money. Right. can pay to have a new ladder truck that has to span seven And stories. I think it probably, I don't know if it'll pass scrutiny with the board of supervisors if they're interested, but if you look at what Dion provided to you, there's some tax bills from places like Warrington and um, some Northern Virginia yeah. communities, and you can see 85 cents per hundred, mm -hmm. and then special tax mm -hmm. levy of 12 cents per hundred, so it would just be on the tax bill. Well, one good, not, it'd be in Nottoway County's best interest, though, even because Nottoway County, we got to remember something, Nottoway County doesn't have a fire department. They don't fight, the only... They, they're generous to our fire department, so they don't, they don't have to fund a fire department. They provide funding for three. If I was in Ottawa County, I'd be looking at this going, hey, love, this is a nice gesture for our local fire departments because they're, you know, they also well, are bringing take that the heat off them, so. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Is crew in Burkeville interested in? I don't know if Dion's talked to them. I assume they have emergency services board meetings. Yeah. They should. It all depends on if yeah. they see development coming. Well, BCBR well, and all that stuff. The county's going to look at it and go, what we do for one, we do for all. That's true. And so if the other two aren't on board with it, then... But they've got Piedmont Park. Not only County says they want to develop Piedmont Park between Crew and Burkeville. This will set the stage for somebody who wants to put a big hotel development there one day. I but, think uh, we should support it. So I guess the question for this council, does this council wish to send a letter of support? And this I would wait for Dion to come back. Okay. To let all him right. frame his ideas about the, the new versus the existing and all that sort of thing before you get yourself... Good advice, Mr. Bernolbeck. Uh, moving right along, we'll go to dilapidated buildings on number one under ongoing projects. Main Street's been demolished. <laughs> You're looking at basketball. I'm looking at football. What did I skip? Oh, the broadband. Oh, I'm sorry. Silly me. What's next? Drug testing? Mm -hmm. Mr. Norbeck, you were going to report on this? Very sparingly. Exact dates, but uh, the town of Blackstone had a random drug test. Um, uh, November 19th. On a quarterly basis. Uh, there were seven employees that were called up. Um, an instant test was used, and three employees were notified that they came back positive. A second test on site was conducted, and all three were negative. But at the Using the same sample. Using the same sample. One of our council people did advise, why don't, Phil, why don't you just get those three employees to go up to Farmall and take a test, take a drug test right here and now. We didn't do the alcohol, because some employees are just alcohol, some employees are just drug. So the employees that, that had those false positives, false positives 
went to Farmville, we had the results and all three were negatives. So I know there was some concern in the community about, oh, what are we gonna do with first strike? Uh, but I don't believe that was an accurate test and we had That's fine. offsite testing. Just for the benefit of the audience, I, I appreciate the, bre the briefer is better here. This council did, did adopt a one striking out policy. My thinking, I, and I want to see how y'all feel. I think, you know, if someone, you have the authority, if someone shows up and is, you think on the reasonable suspicion, you can say go home for the rest of the day because you might be a danger to people here. I would rather rely on a lab test. What I've been, what I've been told is we've had n a number of false positives prior to this episode. I heard we had some prior to this episode where someone, a, a pre-appointment screening, had a false positive. Well, I can't say it was a false positive, but I think there was more data provided to the town where that data should have been provided to a medical review officer. Right. Because I'd hate to be the person, like I said, I mean, you get, you're sitting there, okay, I, you know, I'm, I'm a good person, I don't do anything, then you get a positive. That, is, that just to the employee itself is horrifying. It was pretty horrifying for some. Right. And so, well, I think it's what's the policy moving I forward? I think it's important to say the three employees in question never had a positive result Correct. since they've been with the tank. And they didn't get to go take another, it's the same sample that was tested twice, and then just to further reinforce that. We drove to Farmville, Farmville Hospital. To, well, and, I believe even the, the tester, the people administering the test, said that it was a faulty batch of test strips. And so that's where it was like, okay, well, what's... <laughs> and they don't, like the, they, don't like the, they don't like the instant result. Because they've seen, even though it's sworn to be 98% effective, they've seen this happen before. Well, we saw the 2%. <laughs> okay. So I guess my question is, moving forward, I appreciate the synopsis. Moving forward tomorrow, if someone's drawing a random, are we doing instant tests no. on them again? No. Right, what is the policy moving forward? I think we should move, move the policy to where it goes to farm area. area. We, had, we had done it locally is what we had changed to. Right. We're trying to stay local, but I think we need to. And I think Jennifer who administered the drug testing right. policy, she's not subject to it, I am. So I don't contact the folks and I don't spend a lot of time negotiating and, and how we're gonna do it, but they will come on site just like we used to. And we'll have, a, a, I think it's formal area drug services. We'll, we'll They'll come here. And they do it all, we don't, we used to use two different companies and now FADS will do everything. They will come and take the testing and they send it off to their lab. So we used to use Trident and FADS and then we were getting billed twice, and now ads can do it all, and they will come to site and do the randoms, and for free employment, we can send them as, um, to, to Farmville as well. So tomorrow morning, Billy Colburn, town employee, uh, mm -hmm. sanitation worker. I get drawn. I go give it, I'm going to give a, so if this, let's say this happens tomorrow, I, I give a sample, I guess, uh, here? It's town shop. Town shop. Town shop. That sample is not going to be tested with a dipstick. No. It's going to go to? LabCorp or wherever. Okay, so there'll be no, like, Result that moment. And crisis on the front. Good. Okay. Good. Good. Okay. What's what, the chain of custody? Who, who maintains? We that? won't touch it. It'll all be handled they through do. formal area drug so services. They, come, they're, they they're collect on it. Site when they collect it. They, they collect, collect it. They sign it. Sign it's it. sealed and it's sent. Okay. Yeah. So there's a chain yeah. of custody. Like, um, Does this council need to do any sure action? Because this council did adopt it. You know the one strike policy, which hadn't changed. But do we need to do anything about the? How how it's done, or is that? I think our policy is fine. Okay, okay. We've got random testing. We have pre-employment testing, which would be done in Farmville. The applicant will need to go to Farmville. They won't come here for that. But we've got pre-employment. You have reasonable suspicion, stumbling, you're falling right. down, uh, and then you also have some post-accident requirements on certain, not every accident, and it has to be a, a certain criteria for the dollar values and moving violations and all those kind of things. And then we have a random test, and then. A, well, I don't know. With a one-strike rule, we're going to have follow-up testing, yeah. but I think that's behind us. Uh, we're going to have one strike. There won't be any return to work. What's the time frame in getting the results? It's usually two to three days, and I'm the only one that gets the results, and they email them to me. Now, so do we want to say, do we want to make a motion that we're going to now go to? I'll make a motion when they're going to fast for drug screen testing. Second motion. Okay. And this one where it goes straight to Farmville, right? Mm -hmm. But, the, but just, just to be clear, all right, well, Mr. Morgan's got a motion to go to Farmer Area Drug Testing. Ms. Jones is second. That means people who are drawn at random or it's their time to be tested, they will be tested here in Blackstone by that agency. And the, and the sample's taken right. back to the lab. There is no instant dipstick where we've had faulty readings before. Okay. Any further discussion? I appreciate the way y'all have handled this. The only thing that concerned me, and I got involved in this, was because I got three different phone calls from a wide segment of the community 
they were like, what y'all going to do? I'm like, what are you talking about? I didn't know. And it bothered me, not because a citizen knew something that I did. What bothered me is that the citizen knew something that was inaccurate. You know, citizens have a right to know some of the stuff we, we, but I was alarmed by, you know, this was several days after it happened. I'm like, you know, I don't know the, I honestly don't know. I think everybody's briefed and, right. Uh, I think, I think it'd be wise whoever, so obviously from this building somewhere, whether it was a customer or somebody overheard something, it got put forth. I just, you know, urged, you know. Local head hunters. <laughs> the Larry Palmer once said years ago, there are no secrets in Blackstone. <laughs> All right. We have a motion made and second. Any further discussion? Mr. Miller, you had something you want to say. I'm sorry. Well, I just say this, you know, if it, it, what's in the house, it should stay in the house. Agreed. But once, it, but once they call you or blindside you with information, I feel like if three citizens know about it, I assume the 300 know about it. Well, or 3, it's all right if the seven or eight of us up here. Right. But you got to remember... It was employees, so you know employees were all out there talking amongst each other. So then you've got how many? Sixty employees, mm -hmm. fifty-five employees. That, Ten so or twelve at a time up there that may have been called. Yeah, or, so they're, human yeah. nature, but the employees that I know here that are some of here tonight, I don't see them talking. That's what mystified me. I don't see something. Hey, you know, I just don't. Uh, to me, there would be such a. Well, no, I don't think it was. Yeah. Oh, I'm out to get. No, nah. even though it wasn't her being tested, but I think it was. Oh man, did you hear? Joe Schmo actually got tested positive, right, and, right. Then, and then it just keeps it spreading. I think right. it was the devastation of the employees that got tested. It was such a shock factor, right, right. Now, before y'all vote, real quick, Josh, is this okay with your, with Beth, or do you need to go with a different company, or? No, we use a third-party administrator, and I just need to know where the collection site is, but I do have one concern being the alcohol test. Like, it would be better if that's more instantaneous than having a 45-minute time to follow you. Alcohol tests are instant. It's like a breathalyzer. Mm -hmm. Who does a breathalyzer? They do. Farmville area drugs. Right. So say, say I'm a bus driver for Josh, and I come, hey, Josh, good morning, man. But the, local, <laughs> the local company does that, and it is accurate. But if Josh got a call, said, Billy, you're not getting on a bus, wait 45 minutes. Now, it may hurt me. The delay may actually, you know, depends on how soon I last, how recently I last drank. But if you if you last drank last night and showed up and you just had a smell on you. Right. It's gonna work in your favor, but if you just had a couple of tots before you showed up, it's gonna work, hurt me. You continue going up for an hour, hour and a half after you right. stop drinking. Right. For yeah. example, we did take an employee. We would carry someone in pharmacy. We had regular physicians. We have done that before, and a DOT limit is 0 0.2, 0 0.02, 0 0.02, 0.02, So if it, it helped them, it helped them. It right. was to their benefit because it was in pharmacy. Right. Nonetheless, the alcohol is an instant, and we will okay. continue with it. Josh, do you feel like you have clarity, though? Okay. So alcohol, we will still do local? No, so we'll I, I don't think that's the plan. Okay. I think everything's so going everything to be yes. Okay. Are you okay with that? Are you worried about that? or? I don't think it's going to be you know, Okay. The only way that they're going to get fired is it's a point on the floor. Right. And they're noticeably drunk at that point. So. Mm -hmm. But you have the right, but you do have the right, even though you, sometimes, it may, let's say, it could be a false suspicion, but if you don't feel comfortable, Look, Billy came in, I don't know. You can say, Billy, you're not driving a bus yet. Right. You have that authority, don't you, yeah. without any repercussions. If he thinks it's for the safety of his passengers mm -hmm. and the community, he has that right. And I would hope it would be put in writing at such, yes. such a date and time and all that sort of thing if there was ever a challenge. But uh, he does have the right as a supervisor, if he has a reasonable suspicion, <coughs> that he could okay. ask that employee to go up to him. Very good. We have a motion that's been made and seconded to, for the town to rely on now Marvel area drug testing and no longer we use any instant results. Is there a uh, motion made second? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. Alcohol is instant because it's a breathalyzer. Okay, give gotcha. you a reading right off the Gotcha. Yeah. All right. Next you have the goals, which are your goals. They were just put in words by me, but they were based on your um, suggestions. I may have added one or two in there as I've normally slipped some in there, but I don't think there's anything controversial. I don't believe anything. What are your thoughts? I know they're verbose. It's a long list. I think a lot of these are objective goals. And I said, Colonel Tom did send me an email uh, before he left that these probably are more tangible objectives than they are goals. Goals are very theme oriented. Well, just for instance, number six, uh, the, we mentioned it before, Lonnie. I believe that's a practice yeah. that we should have. Yeah. We should yeah. always keep that in mind. Um, number eight should be a practice that we, um, which mm -hmm. is hold annual retreat 
outside of town. I mean, I think that this whole group here agrees that we all need to get away mm -hmm. and go do something and just so we can talk about the town's issues that we have before us. Um, Anything that troubles anybody, anything that anybody worries about that you'll see a lot of these say the word consider. So it doesn't commit you to saying we're going to definitely do that, but instead have a conversation about something. But if there's anything y'all want to strike, y'all have the right to strike or add right now. And this is not in, this is not in tablet form. It's not the Ten Commandments. Um. <laughs> Number 12 is, I mean, I, I don't know who put that one on there, but I, it's a good one. We actually took the Babs bus from here to the armory that we uh, – what to we could go two weeks ago that's a nice bus i think it should be utilized it is being that it's a town bus now and it's not under the Whatever bus system so we wish you had more homes decorated the christmas light tour yeah. doesn't look like much this year it's a hard candy christmas as dolly Parton once said <laughs> <laughs> i think number 15 i think number 15 we really need Number 15, that was mine. I added that to y'all because I just because I see the dogs, I hear the calls in the scanner, and I feel sorry for police officers. They get they, they say we got a dog here. Pit bull running large, just threatening three people. Number it's 15 like, is a serious problem. <laughs> it's, a, it's a serious problem. It is. It's a quality of life. It's all over town. If, if the animal shelter, not a county animal shelter, is filled, they're not going to take it. Correct. So then we have. You really don't have a. <laughs> I, I in other words, no if you pick result. the dog up, you're stuck with it for the remainder of the night. <laughs> but what I worry about though is that the dogs that can't be picked up, the ones that are dangerous and that have attacked, and that does happen when y'all realize. Especially this time of the year. Yeah. Well, I mean, it could be that we, and I, we got to look into it more, but it could be that you train some of the officers that we have that they can do whatever we need to do to. But are you training them? It's 11 o'clock at night, they have to pick a dog up. Then that, that full out here, what are you going to do with it? I don't know. That's what I'm saying. The mayor has know. a big backyard. <laughs> but remember, the county is still on call for emergency situations. They'll come out. You've been an officer here. You know a deer hound in my yard is not an emergency call. Yeah. They're not coming after that. This all came up several years ago because I believe I was, Barbara and I were on the council when we um, did not fund the animal patrol officer that we had. But it was because it was duplication of services with the county, with the county that we... I mean, if say, if for instance, if Chris goes out and picks a dog up right now, what are we going to do? We can call the county. And they may say, and this has happened several times because my mom is chairwoman for Not Away Allies for Paws. Good group. And um, they'll go out and help a dog. They'll call the county and they go, mm, not our problem right now. So what do we do then if, as a town black if Chris has a dog? Could we sub out to John? Let me ask you, I, I, he's a go-getter. I like John Rourke and Critter Getter. And I know he talked about one time, does the law require us to have him go be certified? I yes. think if you're going to pick up a dog, you need to be certified, yes. And John volunteered to get He certified. solves a lot of people's problems. He really does. And here's the he'll issue answer the phone this. if you call him. Huh? He'll answer the phone <laughs> if you call him. Another issue with him was, not with him, but with the policy with that, I believe, was carrying a firearm. He actually had to go through some extra training or something in the town. He needs to be certified. He needs to have access to the shelter. Yeah. If that's possible you're through not gonna get it. the county. Through the county. They're not going to do it. It's going to be John no. that's going to be able to do it. He's been fairly critical of the... the <clears throat> You know, true, that's yeah, true. He's not going to get yeah. access. You need yeah. to be able, if you pick up a dog, you need to be able to put it somewhere. If you are concerned about rabies or you're concerned about something, you don't need to carry it over to yeah. your friend. But we don't need to decide tonight on animal control, but we can decide, we can agree tonight that maybe during the budget process, between now and then, we talk to Nottoway County, try to come to some agreement, because I'm telling you right now. Oh, what's it, issues? You know, How about dogs that are you see being mistreated or not mm -hmm. taken care of? We, we had one, well, there was one in Crew today. Guess what? One in Crew today had been tied up to the back of a farm use truck in the town of Crew since Friday with no food or water, was emaciated. That was one of the calls that came on the scanner this morning, around 6.30 a.m. And another thing that happens, and this is tough, and this is where I dropped the ball too. And I'll be honest with you, when I see people walking pit bulls, not trying to, there's some great pit bulls out there, but there was a guy walking three pit bulls all over my, walk, my running route. So I'm just like, you know, I want to approach this guy. Who are you? I mean, they're big. I mean, they just look like, you know, they're ready to go pounce, you know. And at all of a sudden, I'm like, you know, he's walking three dogs. I don't see any tool to gather waste. Um, you know, and I'm just like, you know, who wants to be that guy? But, you know, I just wonder sometimes, what, all of us, if we see the new problem, we'll say, hey, how you doing? Welcome to Blackstone. We have a pooper scooper line. Because that guy had nothing, and they were walking a long way. Maybe it was in their his pockets, the bag. Maybe so, but I just... We had a dog, for instance, this um, during the snow last week um, that was loose around the garden center, 
its paws were mm. raw and bleeding from being in the snow. Yeah. It did frostbite, cough, nothing they did. So maybe we, I guess maybe we need to look at, because uh, everyone here I know loves animals. Some of y'all I know are active in that group. We've got to do something because it's a quality of life issue in Blackstone. Not just for the people, but the pets themselves and the animals. Um, and some people have them tied up in the backyard and they bark all night. Yeah, I just, so what, you know, nothing you can do about that either. There are going to be three pit bulls on your obelisk in the uh, cemetery. Maybe <laughs> some. <laughs> but if you hire an animal control officer, you guys go to take somewhat of the county's approach. We're not coming out on Friday night to get the deer dog out of your yard. We'll see you on Monday morning. Otherwise, you're going to have one person who's going to be working 60, 80 hours a week. And getting overtime a lot. Yep. Yeah, or I just need some time off. So you got to, you got to, create a set of parameters what is and what isn't. Are we doing cats? Are we doing squirrels? Lonnie and I responded to a squirrel call oh, one time about 25 years ago. And, uh, we did more damage possible? to the living room than the squirrel did trying to get it. <laughs> right. Do we, what are, what are the parameters we're going to do? Because I think the county and the state code is pretty specific parameters what an animal control officer is responsible for doing. And I think we're going to have to create some parameters otherwise you will get Well, I think the whole dog. animal control issue in Ottawa County is really touchy and it's it is. one of those things where I don't think even the county knows the exact policy to the fullest extent. But they've got two people. They've got the, the most in our lifetime. They now have two human beings assigned as animal control officers. That's, a, that's the most ever. Mm -hmm. and I, but I we're like still the, getting those people where they're told it's not our problem. I mean, to me, I know. if it's always a call, hey, we'll come check it at least or something. I mean, and they're supposed to be on call. I mean, but, when I, you know, but I don't know. I guess it's a goal we can take up getting more in the, in the weeds in the spring. Well, Eric, you're smart. Maybe you need to... Try to come up with some birth control. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, uh, Rob Bain. <laughs> what are your thoughts on the goals? These are, like I say, you're not bound by these. Do you want to adopt these goals tonight? And it, it lets you let people know what you stand for. It's, it's basically to me they're symbolic, but they're real things we want to achieve. But if someone asks, you know, what does this town council stand for? What are y'all's big issues in town? This we've already put it in the paper, man. I think we should go ahead and adopt it tonight. Charles, That's pleasure. What people expect. Yeah. Charles, pleasure. What's your pleasure? I'd rather be renamed because these are not goals. All right, well, you want to call them objectives for 2019? I'm okay with that. It's probably more accurate. Is that a motion, Colonel Tom? Yes. All right, Colonel Tom has moved to adopt the list of objectives and, and duly note the name will be objectives for 2019. Is there a second? I second. Ms. Hasbrook is second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? 7-0, Madam Clerk, um, you have a goal? Well, will we frame the object of, of, of objective. We will, we will condense dramatically, with, <laughs> I will condense dramatically and present to the staff to, to frame. Um, because Ms. Uh, I know Gra she's not here Grace McDonald's not here. We'll, we'll, see, we'll see what we can do with that when we get them framed. Do you want it framed or you just want to take that down or we don't have it framed? No, we need to frame it. I think frame is good, but it, needs to be, but it needs to be less words than on the sheet of paper because, you know. Let's just see what let's see how it goes. But I just think it's good. I think it's good when citizens come here or visitors come here and say, What do y'all stand for? What are you what are y'all's big issues? They can get a snapshot of where we're moving. Absolutely. I think some will I think some will get completed this year. I have no doubt. Moving right along to the broadband uh, tobacco commission, Mr. Norbeck. One of our objectives is to provide better internet service. Um, it just so happened about the same time y'all started talking about goals, the tobacco commission. Uh, put out a call for applications for last mile broadband. We have broadband at the industrial park, at the water tank, but the cost to provide it to an individual business or an individual home is prohibitive. We had the idea, and again, going back to Amelia, Amelia County and Deputy County partnered on this exact same application last year, and they received, it's a 50-50 grant, they received $1.7 million yeah. to put a series of towers in Dinwiddie County and Amelia County to provide wireless internet service, broadband wireless internet. I'm not as confident that we'll be successful because despite the town of Crewe approaching us and asking if we will do a joint application with the town of Crewe, Wade's been very gracious about it and they have the same kind of issues that we do. I think there's internet, but it's maybe not fast enough or it's not what somebody from the cities used to or a suburban area. Do we know what the average cost in Dinwiddie is per household? I do not. I do not. I don't know if they're that far. But the same consultant who's been working with Amelia and Dinwiddie counties 
we've been in touch with, and he is from Jetersville area, I okay. think, and it's called Straight Up Wireless, and they are the consultants going to work with them. They're going to give us a proposal. We're in much better shape because we're not a spread out territory. Got it right. We're not 360 square miles. We're what five square miles, and we've got tanks, water tanks that can be used. The county is actually having to build towers. We don't have to do any of those kinds of things. We believe that our infrastructure costs are going to be way, way, way less, okay? And this is a pre-application basically saying we're interested. I don't have great confidence because if you look at the Tobacco Commission's own literature, the town of Blackstone and the town of Crew are considered served areas, okay? Right. This may be more for places like where I live. Yeah. They ain't no internet right. out there, right? Right. And uh, you either get a satellite dish or you, you, you beg Verizon for one of the really expensive little little wireless things. So I'm not 100% sure we'll pass muster on this because we're designated as served, even though our speeds are not what we'd like them to be, and crew is in the same situation. So I do would like for you guys to know that we would like to submit a pre-application in conjunction with the town and crew and authorization to go ahead and do so. And if we're invited to, then we would submit an application in March, and that'll have a dollar figure. That'll, then you'll know what you're getting yourself into. And uh, could, could the pre-application be uh, Blackstone Crew, and then we find out that the pool application we might include Pickett and in, in the whole county of Nottaway? Because Pickett is a big. I mean, it's bad out there. I mean, you go to the officer club, you can't. Can you make your phone call. If you got Verizon, you're this out of luck. But but this internet. Is internet service. Right. right. This is this is speed on the internet. This isn't speed on your phone or the number of bars you got. Oh, okay. Doesn't have anything to do with that. We're working. The the post commander Preston Scott really got the ball rolling with Verizon a couple of years ago. He was man. He was just all over. You know, people out there hunting. Right. Right. And they get hurt and a soldier gets hurt and um, Verizon has approached us and Verizon will be doing some additional testing on our water tanks and the tanks at Pickett for some additional. Okay. okay. That is in the works. At the behest of Preston Scott. Preston Scott. And, and if something like broadband, if you can't get a successful application. I mean, it could be, for instance, my cousin, or Nicole's first cousin, he um, is providing the internet at our house. We're getting 100 megabytes per second or whatever that. Wow, that's fast. And, um, but it, that's why I asked you about price, because average price is typically 120 a month. Granted, he get he's given it to us, but mm -hmm. I mean, so there's options. I don't know the exact speed. I'm, I'm certainly relying on others, but this would be a wireless. Broadband access in excess, obviously, of the 10 that you can get on Shintel. Yeah, right. The 10 widgets or whatever, uh, megabytes. <laughs> you all want to move forward with the pre-application? There'll be another opportunity in the, in the spring for the full application. So, so. Ms. Thompson has moved to proceed. Is there a second? Second. All right. We'll give Ms. Hasbrook the second. Any further discussion? All in favor say aye. Uh, Opposed? Aye. Motion carries 7-0. I think crew's meeting tonight, too, and they're also going to... Okay. Um, now we may move on to ongoing projects, and you have the home on Main Street's been demolished, and some other items to report. Uh, on the dilapidated building, Main Street, if you know where that is, it's across from D. Duncan's apartments. If you go over there, Wallace Acres, before he um, took some leave, he got the building torn down. Uh, asbestos is cleaned out. We're going to have a contractor cleaning that one up simply because I don't want to leave it there for an extended period of time, and, and Mr. Akers may be taking some additional time off. Okay. So uh, we'll be working on getting that one cleaned up and graded. Uh, the glass shop, which was on my list, if you remember, was the front of the building was missing, and it was over you know, Spicely Street, behind the glass Spicely shop. Spicely Street, that's right. And the property owner removed that at their expense. So the tenant didn't have to get involved. And then uh, there is a house on Fall Street in the 900 block, I think. Excuse me, the 800 block of Fall Street that was, has been condemned for some time, and that'll be the next one that will get started. The property owners actually approached us about demolishing the property. There are three properties that I've shown Cody Lewis, who is the new excuse me, the new training officer for the fire department. Uh, property on Fall Street. Yeah. There's one on Nottaway Avenue. That is a very very old house on Nottaway Avenue. It's like a wood frame, almost like a garage. Um, they were agree. Or Cody to this point would be agreeable with his business approval, and then Gilbert Ruffin has a piece of property on Center Street that had been rezoned for some apartments. The house is open now. People are getting in it, breaking the windows, doing that sort of thing. And uh, so we asked him to secure it. He said, I'd just as soon tear it down. So 
I think the fire department will be agreeable to burning it down, and I should be meeting with the Rugby Environmental, which is the asbestos abatement company, to go in there and do the testing to make sure that there's no asbestos. Can we also ask someone to just get another set of eyes on the home, the old Skidmore home on Fifth Street I mentioned? Because I have been told that young people have been seen going into that house, uh, boys and girls together, and I just think that 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 home is reaching a breaking point. I think Dean will be receptive to going over there. Huh? Dean, the building inspector, would be receptive to going. We have a new building inspector, and he has not. Uh, Al Ellington and I had been over there a couple of times. Right. They're both of the neighbors, and it was not condemned. Yeah. Maybe Dean has a different approach or a different view of it. And, yeah. Uh, okay. It's just, it's going to be a safety hazard. Um, any other business on that before we go to. You say you got. Excuse me. Go ahead, go ahead. You say you got a new building inspector? For the county. The county does. Dean county Lewis. A building official. His name is Dean Lewis. Two it's years. He's been a job two years. Yeah, he's in the second year. Because we need, can we take another look at that house down on Broad Street? The top? Lewin? Yeah. Already did. He's already been down there with Jennifer to look at it. Because it was not condemned originally as a Tucker house. And uh, I think it had been, he's provided a list of items, and Jennifer can tell you more, a list of items that need to be done for the house to be considered acceptable. But I think Mr. Vaughn, who owns the house, mm -hmm. I think is agreeable to, to doing something, yeah. There's a gentleman bought it at a tax sale. Okay. I'm not sure he knew what he was buying. But right. He was about ready to fall in. Look beyond price, don't they? Uh -huh. <laughs> That's right. He did come in the other day and get the demolition. He did what? He came in the other day and got his demolition permit. Okay. All right. And I think he's going to try to work it in with the project. Okay. Very good. Meals tax, nothing to report. Street improvement projects, Maple Lane. It's a legitimate issue. Good drainage problem on Lane. On the front, on the high end, or down low where Ed lives? It's in front of Ms. Hayden's house yep. and uh, Tom Hunter's house. Yep. I've been down there. Tom and Dick. called my mother-in-law and I and back and forth. And at the end of the day, they got legitimate beef. There's water stains in the ditch. They stand all over town. Curb and gutter's the answer. Curb and gutter's the answer. So um, a brief review with the neighbors has indicated there's probably a significant amount of interest. And Ms. Hagman, who I've gotten to know, is a... She's the best person ever. She's been talking to her neighbors, and I think we're going to, in the month of January, have a little sit down with everybody, explain it, design what it's going to cost, have a title search prepared, have a, 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 a copy of what the lien would look like, and all those kind of things. If we get the three quarters on each side. It's a big project because, like I say, there's no, that's a long block, quote unquote. It's like seven houses each with side. That, though, it, I mean, with the project that size, I mean, it would be nice if a lot of them paid for it instead <laughs> of putting liens on the property. It would be nice. <laughs> and that reminds me, I, that. Yes. Eric is right on this, and I thought about this the other day because I, I don't mind telling you, I've done, the, I've walked it off of my, my side of my house. It's it'd be like a, it'd be about uh, seven thousand dollars. Now, if I decide to say, yeah, go ahead and do it, town, put a lien on the house, does or any interest through 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 the years, interest doesn't accrue. Uh, Julia Staples' is home. Yeah. On uh, college. We just were paid for that about two, three years ago. So you're crazy not to do the lien. The lien is, is, is more, it's, yes, yeah. But it does show up at a bank. Oh, sure. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. When my daughter's going to sell the house 50 years from now, yeah, they'll have to pay, so what, 7000 yeah. That's Not, oh, well, it was seven. Oh, now it's uh, 21000 Thanks, Mom and Dad. No no <laughs> yeah, I mean, so you'd be a fool not to do the lien, which worries me, though, because I tell you, because <laughs> we do shell out a lot of money for these curb and gutter. And I would say... Two thirds pay, and a third put the lien. Okay. Yeah. Two thirds pay. And a lot of people, if you go down on Brunswick Avenue, for example, um, they don't want to have. Passo, where the, the the block between uh, like Marcello. Yeah. That block right there. Um, one of the three properties paid, and two put the lien. If you go up the street across from uh, Mayor Harris's old yeah. house, yeah. Um, woman on the corner, Christine Bryant, she paid. Uh, Ms. Carwile paid. So there were very few people that actually chose to lean on that block. Out of five houses, I think only one chose to lean, and that wasn't chosen. That was one on the corner at Fifth and, yeah. and Brunswick. But so Maple Lane, just think out loud, if you go from Maple Lane, that that, that road eventually goes downhill, and our our, our dearly beloved uh, water yeah. superintendent, Ed Harris, we're going to create some major water flow by his house, aren't we? What's behind? Well, the intention is we're not going to create. I mean, we can't do that. I mean, we can't wash the guy at the end of the line. Right. What happens at the end? We either have to put a drop in it, or maybe even valley gutter, or something okay. like that will convey it to, to whatever ditch or the receiving the okay. street. Okay. Okay. Now, if we leave a curb and gutter project and it's worse than it was, yeah, it's all anyway. We're not going to sell any more curb and gutter. Well, well question. Huh? Just say, for instance, you had to do curb and gutter on. Let's just say Maven. Maven Avenue. Okay. And we took a house down, 
last year mm -hmm. and they put a lien on the property the house was demolished and they don't ever pay anything on it mm -hmm. and then he goes to sell that lot would you ever get your money back absolutely you would be paid your first your first it doesn't bring that much yeah. well He's still obligated to, to mm -hmm. satisfy the lien. It's not like a tax lien. Yeah, the buyer, whoever buys it, that's the, the first, that's the money's going. But, I mean, just suppose that the lot sells for $5,000. Well, and here's the scary part. The In my personal opinion, that the lien will survive closing if it's not paid off or it's forgotten. And there's some that have been forgotten. I can tell you, there's a property that's been transferred, and there are existing deeds of trust from back in the 80s and some from the 90s. And that, some of those houses have been sold a time or two. And the deed of trust for the property owner Before 20 years ago gone. is still on the book. I don't have record of it being paid, and there's not a release recorded for Wow. Yeah. But could it be brought before council again like Nottoway does? That Somebody say. It's, a, it's sold at auction and didn't bring it up? And then council you know, always has the yeah, discretion to choose. Yeah. Yeah. Good question, Madam Clerk. Good question. All right, well, that's just information on Maple Lane. That's a, that's a decent project there. Um, we may have to do half one year and half the next year. And we've got some folks in line in front of them, obviously. Yeah. And potentially others as well. In High Street. All right. And we may find out, we may be working on 6th Street if, at Ms. Blevins' property. If. We may very well be on 6th Street. <laughs> All right, move right along to Rigglesworth Sports Complex with the TAP 21 grant. There's a reason I don't work in the federal government. <laughs> Not fast enough for you. It's just <laughs> lengthy. And now we've, we've resubmitted the 100% plan, and they, uh, they're giving us wage determination or a determination of what our goals are for minority or disadvantaged businesses and environmental review. Okay. It's, I'm no longer promising you a date. I just <laughs> but it's boilerplate. It's something that we can, we can meet yeah, that requirement. We will do what they have to say. It's just current. We'll get the grant. Oh, the grants here. Yeah, yeah, we're just waiting for funding. Paperwork. Waiting for them to approve the plans so I can bid it in. Utility upgrade project number five on the water distribution project, uh, Route 40. That's just uh, Route information. 40, they've left. Um, there'll be a boring crew coming in probably before the first of the year or at the first of the year to bore under the main entrance of Pickett. There's a beat out road, and I don't like those open cuts, so they're going to have to bore, uh, bore casing under the main entrance into Fort Pickett, and then he'll come back and tie the lines in. Uh, the same contract will be starting on East Hill. Like and they'll do that without any traffic interruption? They have to do it as a, there may be some flagging when they're digging their pit or offloading wow. or loading equipment, but VDOT's not nutty about open cuts. We're a little more lenient on open cuts because they're a lot less expensive, um, but a boring machine, basically they bore a big casing under the road and block it's amazing. the amazing. All right, moving right along to East End, we have a $90,000 grant that I guess we need to formally accept. That's correct. Now, this rural community assistance project has provided us, and we've spoken about this, and we had a verbal, uh, but this is actually in writing as 90000 to be spent 24 months. So we've got to make the commitments. And this is specifically being used for new taps for each individual house, watering and system. Mm -hmm. All right. So moved. Madam President has moved to formally accept the grant. Uh, Yvonne, so good. good job getting that. <coughs> But, uh, all town staff getting that grant. Mr. Miller has seconded. Uh, I ask for a roll call vote, starting with Ms. Jones. Aye. 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 Motion carries 7-0. Within 24 months, we have to... Within On the rental property maintenance, we've been discussing this for a while, and I believe Ms. Wilson wants to have a public hearing on January 28th. That's just informational. All right, we're moving forward to, uh, and that would be great to notify the landlord. I know you've talked to landlords already. Certainly they would be invited to come to that, yes, encouraged to come to that hearing if they have concerns. How are they reacting, would you say, overall? Are they, are they favorable? They understand that it's an ordinance that, that's been on the books for 20 years and we just want to enforce? What, what, what are you hearing from the landlords? Nothing. Nothing? Nothing, actually. Um, we only had a couple who actually attended that meeting. Okay. So the ones who... Were there seemed to be familiar in the past with whatever was started. Okay. So pretty much they're waiting on us to move forward. Okay. Very good. Um, uh, that's just informational. I believe the next item, weatherization. Ms. Wilson? Yes. Um, S and S, uh, pretty much um, they've already reached their 50% or more on the home and weather permitting. Um, our goal was to try to be done by the end of this month. So we're going to be checking on that to see if we're still going to be able to meet that goal or not. 
So how many homes have you done? The this is just the last? one um, all together. Mr. Fields. Um, this is Mr. Fields. Oh, okay. Yes, on Stoke Street. Fourth weatherization house. But this is the first one that is totally being rebuilt. Oh, there are, let me ask you this, just thinking out loud. Do you foresee others that were, are there other homes that people live in that are as bad as his has been? Really? Dozens. Dozens. She's got 100 applications. 100 applications. Wow. But not for rebuild. No, 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 no. no. Majority are. Uh, in really bad upgrading condition. the electric from 60 amp to 200 amp, which will save a huge amount of money, right. things like that. Um, and we would like to do some more of those. So all we're finding when we get in, uh, best intentions just to insulate something and, man, yeah, termite the beating is still out of them. What are we going to do? Uh, we don't want to do work on the house and then find out, you know, the roots are True. But I know the cause nonetheless. And Absolutely. And we'll keep the monster one by the time. And the conference are playing, nothing new to report. Um, I think last time we discussed that, you, we mentioned something in January, maybe? That's the goal, working towards January. Okay, all right. To have a draft. Um, but I would like to go back to the, um, to the rental inspections. Yes, yes. Requesting to be referred to a committee. I would refer that to Health and Ordinance Committee. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Getting on to new business, uh, we spoke earlier about the cemetery. We have a request to buy a corner lot. I believe the requester is, take care, Jennifer. Merry Christmas. We'll see you Thursday. Uh, the requester is Sharon Dalton. Okay. Um, our ordinances or our policies require that each block, and if we look at our cemetery is divided into block, each block is divided into sections, eight grade sections, if it's eight grade or four grade sections. Okay, two grade sections. And it does state in our policies that the corner lots, I think it's number eight, I think mm -hmm. you have it. Uh, number eight of the new policy you guys just adopted, one half of every corner lot will be reserved by the town for whatever purpose, whether it's planting trees or turning radius, turning radiuses and that sort of thing. The town's never sold any of those that I'm aware of. And this is adjacent to the 20 lots that she, or spaces that she currently owns. She has 20. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. About a bunch of, and okay. uh, maybe more than that, maybe in addition, but I think she's given some family members some of the lots. She'd like to, and she brought me a $1,600 check. We've deposited it, but we will cut her a check in reimbursement if the council chooses not to do this. This is a corner lot, and policy clearly says the town will reserve it. She just doesn't want anybody for any reason. Can we, can we, if council so chooses, this may be put, putting the cart before the horse, if council so chooses to honor the sale, could we have a provision in there where the town, she can't give it or sell it to anybody else unless we get the right of first refusal? I, that, I think with as much as you have going on over there right now, this, this has been set in stone for a while, so I don't see any need to change it now. You're saying maybe not sell it? Right. I, I worry about, you know, it, it is interesting. Because you're opening up another can of worms. That's, you just open up another issue in the cemetery. Could she do anything with it? Uh, unless you put stipulations that nobody could be buried in there. She said that her plan is not to bury anybody in there, but just prevent the town ever from... She's playing. She's basically <laughs> trying to secure the sanctity of, of the area. She's on three sides. Whole, and she, yeah, she wants the whole block. I don't see any need to change in what we have now. I mean, if we have it, then nobody's going to be buried right there. So it'll be shrubbery or turning radius or whatever. I think she may want to plant some trees or something. Of course, if so, if, if now if if council were to sell to her or John Doe or Jane Doe, they would still have to comply with the cemetery policy as far as, I mean, they couldn't decide to go plant. I mean, you know, are there rules about what they can do? Can they just decide to just kind of do something crazy? I mean, we have trees planted on there. Not that she would. I know she wouldn't, but I don't worry about her. It's it's the next person. Which is why we already have a set in stone. I, I don't Mr. Morgan raises a valid point. Why we should change it. <laughs> I know she the town was, manager likes that check. She was adamant during our. <laughs> committee meeting to hand the check over right then. She did. She came in a few days later and handed me a $1,600 check. Yeah, but you could, like, could take well, a $1,600 check and get $15,000 worth of headache. True. So it's set in stone. <laughs> Nobody can change it. The town owns it to do it. The shrubbery or whatever. I say can, I like don't it know is. the reasoning behind it on her behalf. Is there any way we can there's got to be a reason. I mean, I don't understand why you'd want to fork out 1600 bucks when it already is going to be reserved no matter what. 
I mean, my hypothesis know. is that she, my hypothesis is based on what I see of her and the way she cherishes that area where her late husband's buried is I'm just guessing out loud, if I'm wrong, forgive me, Ms. Dalton, is that she wants to preserve the sanctity and the way, the tranquility of the way she wants the, the burial place to be. I don't think that's far off, Emma. I mean, she takes it pretty serious. She does. She, she does. does. Which, I mean, it's, she takes care of. No doubt. Everything. If everyone had, the, if everyone was like, but she you're was. going to open it up. You're, gonna, you're just going to open up another bag of worms for the cemetery. You know, they're already settling stuff now. Let's just leave it like it is and it's a dispose of them in the future headache. It's a, it's a sound argument, Mr. Morgan Mace. What is your pleasure, counsel? Would you be opposed to, and I'm fine with that, but would you be opposed if we brought this back up in January and tell her, hey, why? It's unusual. It's, we never had this different. before. I mean, is there reasoning behind why? Just given, I mean, I don't know. I mean, to well, me, it's just throwing 16 her, let, her, let her explain it to the whole council yeah, what you're saying. She didn't explain it to us that night, really. She just said, yeah, I want to Let her explain it to the whole council right. why she wants this. Right. You know, well, we I'm need honest. to change a policy. You say that the, her request is not admissible by policy, correct? You guys would have to grant a waiver. Word of me, I'm going to cut her a check back to 1600 bucks. but everybody's entitled to appeal to council. I cut you off, Ms. Nash. What were you saying? I'm sorry. No, you're good. Okay. No. It, but does common consent just say that Ms. Dalton, the two ways you can go, you can deny the request and Mr. Morgan is a suggestion, or you can say, Ms. Dalton, it's such, this is the first for us. We'd like to have some more information. Is it? I mean, it's just difficult to receive 1600 bucks. You, so you're, you, you're going to bring her in to have her explain. What is that, what is that going to change? It's going to make it harder to say no. It's going to make it harder <laughs> to say no. Yes. So you, you've already fixed a lot of problems that were in the cemetery. Let's not add to it again. I mean, if the town owns it and it's going to put shrubbery or landscape or whatever, that's going to guarantee that nobody else is going to be buried right there. Right. That's right. You, if you're worried about people being, you know. True. That's going to help your sanctity, right? You know. True. True. So I, I move to not to do that. Okay, Mr. Morgan has moved to deny the request to purchase the uh, corner lot. Is there a second in Mr. Morgan's motion? Is there a second going once, going twice? I thought I heard. And it's not good. Right, let me make sure. Is there last call? Is there a second? Hearing none, the motion dies for lack of a second. Any further discussion? Could, I guess the other option is either. To, to, to either do it or to say, Ms. Dalton, please come to us in January. It's just new. It's, this is new stuff for us. And it is. I, I never heard I of agree, this. I agree with Lonnie, but I just know next month we're still going to get brought up because she's going to come up here. So that's why I said just let her say her piece and reassure her that it's in the policy that there's nothing the town can do to it. I mean, no one can do anything to it. Sure. And I think that will probably ease her mind, and then she would accept the 1600 back without... It's always good to hear from somebody. It's always good to hear from somebody. Is this still even in the old part of the cemetery? Is that just yeah, that, that, that was not revised. That was old. I can't say the old cemetery. The old policy in the new section. The old section goes out to the corners. Like in section A and B, the old, with many of the Confederate stones are and that sort of thing, the old historical ones. This is more in the new section. It yeah. was in the policy and it's not taken out. Yeah. Do you want it's to? one of those. <clears throat> well, I mean, it's one of those. You got people taking automobile parts off. Now you got people unable to do this. People can do this. Nobody can put that over here, but you can put it over here. And now you're just going to add to it oh, after I, you've I just gone through all this Mr. trouble Morgan's making Mr. issues Mor in the cemetery. He's saying, right, what Mr. Morgan's saying is easier to say no now than to try to say it later. Mm -hmm. It's a valid point. And then you're going to come, if you do agree after she comes up or whoever comes up, You've opened up a can of worms, so if somebody comes up next year and wants to do something. You're going to have any grounds to say no. Foot, yeah, you once know? you start grant waivers, you, it's easy to grant waivers. Um, his motion did die for lack of a second. What? How do we want to proceed from here, members of council? It's just bizarre. <laughs> I'd say cut her a check back, back the and then let her come back. <laughs> what, I don't think any harm can be done by that, Ms. Hans, but let's agree by common sense. Would have her come to the committee or the full council, her choice. Mm -hmm. I have, um, have him cut her a check back, give her her money back. Meanwhile, she wants to come yeah, to until, talk. Yeah, because her request was not granted tonight, council by common consent is saying you can give her the $1,600 refund. Um, and like I said, I don't think, it, I, I can tell you right now, if everyone kept, took care of graves like she did, 
we wouldn't have a we'd have the most beautiful cemetery in the well, country. That's, that's not the question. But that she is not the question. The stuff. question is the that's next not person. The question. It's, it's the president. It's it's the and it's not so much of how many plots she owns. Right. But when you start doing that, you're right. You're opening it up, and you know, next time somebody's gonna put a big statue on the corner where you can't turn anything well, around. Well, that's that's my wife's request, know. but don't get to that. Yet. Well, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll put you up on the hill. <laughs> but my thing is, you start it now. You're, and Mr. Then Morgan, you, you are. Change. You are, you are, you are correct. You're correct. All right, do we, Mr. Novak, you're not going to, you're going to return the check and we'll hear more from Ms. Dalton. Mrs. Dalton. Um, move it right along. Folks, I've done this every year. It's a, it's a school choice week proclamation. I'm asked to, by a group to endorse. It, it's benign. I don't like it because I, but I want y'all to see it because I feel like resolution like this council should, I don't think the mayor by charter has the authority to just wing resolutions out. What do you mean you don't like it? Is I just feel like it. You know, if I'm going to sign a, if the, if oh, the you mayor, don't, you want the whole council to know. I, I personally support this because gotcha. it's benign. Okay. But I, the, your school choice sometimes for some people is code for pro private school, or, and I don't think that's here. Because the good news right now in, in South South Virginia, if some kid from Amelia County or Prince Edward County wants to go to Nottaway County Public Schools, they go without any tuition. It used to be like a tuition, but our enrollment's gotten so low right now. No, at Nottaway Schools, you can go wherever. Petersburg did the same thing several years ago because of the decline in enrollment. So school choice is not code for pro-private, independent. It's pro-everybody. And that's I move, why. I move that we support the proclamation that's presented. And have second. the mayor sign it. Mr. Miller has seconded Mr. Nash's motion. Um, I, they ask me every year to do it. They keep a list of who does it until Blackstone's on the map. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries 7-0. USDA grants for police cars. We're simply asking authorization to uh, submit to USDA the same type of application that we do every two or three years. We purchase vehicles under this program on two occasions, once in 2014 and once in 2018. <coughs> the two uh, marked explorers, I believe they are, these were under this program as well. Typically, it's a $25,000 grant, and the residue or the difference, these would be a loan. And uh, the town can put some portion of it in there, but um, I think we've been over this a time or two. They don't like you paying them off early enough. Uh, we will have the original two police cars that we purchased in 2014 on the first grant. Their last debt payment will be in the year of 2019. And I'll be honest with you, as slow as this is sometimes, it'll probably be in 2019 or 2020, or uh, late 2019 or 2020 before this actually comes to fruition. I'd entertain a motion to proceed with the uh, grant application. Mr. Nash, you move. Is there a second? Yes. I'll give uh, Colonel Wilkinson a second. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? The ayes have it. We have a request for a committee referral transit guide. I'm guessing this is BABS related? What is the request, basically? I'll refer to the Transportation Committee. Okay. Um, it's basically just informational booklets to hand out or have available to um, individuals trying to figure out how the bus system works. It's Good. explain how to set up times and schedule rides and stuff like that. So it's purely an informational booklet. Very good. Is it anything, I know Judy Ellington helped Babs years ago before you got here with uh, some schedules. Is it, is it more in-depth than schedules or? If, I mean, I have like information on how to use a schedule, but okay. we'll actually have schedules in it. Okay. I'll refer the transit guide to uh, the Transportation Committee. Airport. Airport and Transportation Committee. Is the, I, th I was thinking that this was, I didn't even think about uh, Babs, but I was thinking this was that map that the Chamber is looking at doing. They are, well, Which I know that they're doing something. No offense, is exorbitantly priced. It's a little high. There's going to be another another uh, community guy coming out next year that I think is going to be a lot more user-friendly, just my opinion. Okay. Josh, is this a guide that's already that you've already created, or is this something that needs to be built from scratch. I have a final draft and a rough draft put together for y'all to see, but um, it's purely new. There's no, nothing is working on it. Will this include like maybe the pick the new fast sea shuttle that you're talking about? Will that that'll be uh, information on that in there, yes. Great. We have the new branding by this by the time so Freedom some, Freedom Express. Freedom Express. Someone get a Facebook page he could we could put the rights on the Absolutely. Facebook page. How is Project Facebook, Operation Facebook coming along? I've created it. I'm working out tweaks because Jennifer does not want to get notifications. So I'm having to work out. Will you be able to receive I know you, we talked about no one can comment and say bad stuff, but can someone message Town Hall? Correct, yes. That's tough because I get them up. 
Yeah, that's tough. I don't think you can't. I don't think you can make it where you can't message. It just bounces back to Mr. Nash. The purpose is to notify. Right. Not for people to come back and save my water meter. Right. It needs to be repaired. Yeah. Or someone to say, you know, my bill seemed high. How much power did I use the last three months? Because that, believe me, that's what you're going to get. I've created and done everything. It's not public yet. Right. Well, that's good. Actually, so it's created. I keep looking. I keep, what's Eric, what are Eric and Jennifer done? But uh, we'll look forward to that. Mayor's Minute. Three. He's on there. We're all on. Yeah, you can, everybody cuss it all they want. We're all guilty of it. It's a guilty pleasure. Watch a train's wreck. <laughs> um, a few items on Mayor's Minute real quick. Um, I know we've got a lot on us, and a year ago, I'm not, and maybe maybe tonight, Schwartz Tab, and we agreed last year to light it this Christmas. They're doing it today. Is they it, are? It's actually They were working on it today. Day. There's a bill in your, okay. it's going to happen. Okay. The snow has got down a little I know, bit. they've been behind. So, uh, Dan actually mentioned it to me today. He said, you know, I still got to get those crazy lights up there, but the lights are purchased and Dan just needs to get them. And I'm thinking maybe I'm, and I just asked council to think about this. One of the last Christmas I said, you know, that building, it's a town's oldest landmark. It should be displayed, you know, it doesn't have to look like Colonial Williamsburg, but lit up. And maybe all year long it might, lighting would not hurt anything there, security wise, safety wise, just a thought. Um, also, it's brought to my attention a carriage museum sign. There's wood on a building. I think, can we get that taken care of? We already got it working. Okay, that's in progress. Okay. Um, two other items, let you go. Um, folks, as I said at the beginning of the meeting, and I don't like to fall victim to the, the, ne the negativity out there, because but you know, like I said, the trains, which was a valid reason, Mr. Daniels, God bless the Daniels family, everything done for Blackstone. Maybe next year that'll come back. We've got new decorations. Um, I'm thinking this is a big thought I had, and it may not, it may be cost prohibitive, but I, I was, <coughs> two communities got my attention. South Hill this past uh, Thanksgiving had a three-day period of ice skating in their town. It wasn't a real ice rink, but it was something that simulated ice rink. They had it the day after Thanksgiving and that weekend of Black Friday. Well, I went to Williamsburg this past weekend. They have an actual ice rink. Um, I'm sure it was costly. It's called Liberty Ice Pavilion. I would like for the town and DBI together to plan, to look at next Christmas. Is there something we can do for a one day or three day to create some excitement either in the square, beside the armory, in the lighted sea park? This is a question. How many in this room can ice skate? Uh, I can. I can. I've tried it. Okay. It's been a while. I can. You can I can. use the buckets. But it's not a matter whether you skate or not. It's, a, it's the fact that... Would, I'm grateful you but all you and Lisa day. would get out there and try. We, we, we would try. It. We would try. And I just want to look. At, yes, that. Are you unbreakable? Danville. 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 <laughs> Danville. Theirs was through a twenty-five thousand dollar grant. And South Hills was just in their sponsorships alone. I think they were new with twenty grand. It was eleven. I was told eleven thousand. That's what the actual cost was. I think it was higher than right. what they but if we start now, like I said, I'm just thinking this year I've heard a lot of people say, well, gosh, no parade, which is no one's fault. The, the trains was no one's fault. And we the still have Christmas carolings this coming weekend. We have Christmas carol this weekend that Mr. Nash is leading. We've got no great parade. decorations. But I think that towns that don't, towns that quit trying start dying. Yeah. And I think that we've got to think of something new. And, and just a thought, when I did look at Colonial Williamsburg's ice skating rink, this, I looked at it, studied it. It was about the size, it was about... Not quite as wide as a square, but I looked, I saw Dominion Energy sign, they're sponsoring. Maybe, and I know tell me he's gonna cringe at this, but maybe it's a good faith gesture to people to say, look, our town electrical department is gonna pay pay for this. For <laughs> just a thought. Just a thought. Not not man it and staff it, not that. But have some company come in here just as a good faith gesture, goodwill. Because I heard one of the comments on Facebook today was, well, I guess the lighting contest was canceled because people can't afford the town of Blackstone light bills, which is inaccurate. You want to see your South but, South Electric might donate? Right. But anyway, I just ask if we could agree, unless council has strong to explore for next Christmas some sort of Christmas or ice skating recreational to create more excitement for the holidays for Blackstone. Maybe have the tractor ride in the, in the park. Bring that back, too. Or, or do that. Just anything. Because there's no one's fault, and the town workers went above and beyond this year. They had so much done on them. The Got look good. The park yeah, looks great. Look I and think we should refer it to the beautification committee. Ah. Okay. Because mm. it's, I mean, the town is busy, and I'm not saying the town shouldn't do it. The town's going to help. I mean, I, I love Christmas. Have a beautification and DBI. Can we work together yes, and, and explore? Definitely. I think so. Would that be okay, Zach, just to explore? 
All right. And my last uh, issue is uh, is that we can involve the chamber. Yeah. Right. It may be this too cost prohibitive, but I just said, I walked by there Saturday in Colonial Williamsburg, which I know is Cadillac. But I said, you know what? Our kids in Blackstone, Virginia have, a, you know, that may be the only chance they ever see an ice rink. You know, a lot of, you know, we think that a lot of us that travel, we think that we all live lives like we do, but they don't. Kids here don't get out. Okay. Be a chance for us to establish a tourist so, so to Absolutely. I just think that, you know, so, so great. I think it's tourism great. for us has normally been Christmas heavy, <laughs> but I think, and we're going to learn more in January about making it all year long, but I think that, you know, I just think this place here that we call Blackstone is so great this time of year, I think we can make it even better. So if we could agree, in my last comment on Mayor's Minute, besides town staff, great year, awesome, town manager, everyone, just the, the the sanitation people, the police. We got the best town employees everywhere, anywhere. Uh, bond secure. If we can get to try, to, I know y'all gonna help me set up a meeting with Bond Secure. Yeah, there's a gentleman I spoke with. He's the right guy, Herbert Cummings. Okay. Bond Secure. I think he's met with us before. I, I have met with him before. And he is. Uh, I'm awaiting him to give me a date where his tribe can get together and we'll give you those dates. All right. That's all I've got, folks. Um, I have one thing. Yes. I would like to formally thank. All of the town workers for this past snow. No doubt. The the negative comments I have been seeing on Facebook Not have just many. been ridiculous. But as fast as that snow was coming down and it's heavy, <laughs> I, I thought they did an excellent job getting you know done what they did. It was as fast as I can remember. The snow that deep as fast as I can remember being removed. But it's funny, Philip. People complain, and I, and I, Lonnie and I saw this day, and I, and I know that you know we have to plow the streets. And obviously, when you plow a street, it creates a little bit of snow on the side of the road. There's no way to prevent it. But that. you can't not plow the streats. <laughs> yeah, right. I, but it's just amazing what people's... Look, when I was little, I watched my parents shovel the snow. Then when I got old enough, I was out there shoveling right. the snow. The other day, I was out there shoveling until my friend uh, Eric came on. But I think he only does that when he sees Lisa out there with a shovel. But, <laughs> but I mean, that's just what it is. That's, that's the way it is.